Hello everyone. This is for you. This is for the younger generations. Okay. <laughs> Today I'm going to talk about magical power of biographies. Before getting into the topic, let me introduce myself and the kind of work I am doing. Okay. Next. Okay, next. Next. No problem. Or you can operate manually. Okay, let's get started. <clears throat> okay, my name is Kiran Prabhu. Once again, I'm repeating for you. <laughs> and uh, the kind of work I am doing is a single man army kind of work. And what I have been doing for the last 10 to 12 years, I am telecasting radio shows. Those are called talk shows which are hosted in YouTube. There are 850 talk shows currently available on YouTube. And these talk shows, they cover wide variety of topics like books. I talk about books. I talk about stories, English stories and then regional stories, etc. And I talk about a lot of biographies. And I talk about films. I talk about film personalities. I talk about literature. I talk about sports. I talk about uh, 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 arts, wide variety of topics. What catch though? All these talk shows are in the language called Telugu. How many of you know Telugu? Good, two, three, good. So Telugu is a language, for those who don't know about Telugu, Telugu is a language spoken by more than 85 million people around the world. And it is the highest spoken language in India in the fourth rank and in the world 15th rank. So the reason for doing these talk shows in Telugu is it is my mother tongue and some of the emotions can be best expressed in our mother tongue. So that's why I chose that language. 
and these talk shows i have been doing for 12 years when i started these talk shows i was not having any idea why i am doing and what impact they are going to have i just started as a hobby but after 2 3 years i found they are having a lot of impact on the listeners and the listeners they started giving me feedback that they are enjoying them a lot they are getting influenced by them when i got that feedback i seriously concentrated on the type of topics i have been presenting and then i switched to different varieties of topics you may ask there are hundreds of talk shows and there are hundreds of podcasts available in what way you are differentiator and what is that you are making differently and why it is influencing lots of people so i will explain this is for the 12 years these are happening non stop non stop in the sense initially for 4 5 years i telecasted three shows per week show means it is 45 minutes and for the last 8 years weekly one show non stop non stop means non stop i did not stop even a single week wherever i am in the world and that talk show is coming up currently there are more than 1000 shows i have done and more than 850 are available on youtube if you are having your cell phone you can search kiran prabha k i r a n p r a b h a you can find 850 talk shows in youtube and the one differentiator of these talk shows they are not like 10 minutes 15 minutes they are 45 minutes have on an average length of 45 minutes and it's not reading i don't read the books and it's not reporting it's not a journalist it's not journalistic reporting it's not reviewing that means take 400 500 pages of book and give 2 3 minutes of review of the book it's not like that and it's a kind of a narration of its own to feel what i am saying probably you have to listen to one of the shows and then you can feel exactly what i am saying why it is different from other kind of talk shows and uh, this uh, next please and out of all these talk shows the most impacting talk shows are biographies how many of you have the habit of reading biographies my dear anger friends which one good so these biographies uh as i told you after 2 3 years when i got feedback from the listeners they are getting impacted i seriously concentrated on narrating the biographies again i am repeating it's not reading the biography narrating the biography and uh, currently there are around 600 talk shows only on biographies available in my channel out of these 600 you can compare in order to make a biography story i read 3 4 books or 3 4 books not on one book so all these talk shows are research based talk shows i do lot of research before presenting a talk show and uh, no gossiping no rumors no negative things and no cheating thumbnails it is a pure biography means biography and uh, it's not a bio data you know the difference between bio data and biography bio data means just bullet points what that person is what he has achieved chronology etc and what i am narrating is a biography it's a story life story of that person and uh, this is the own style of story narration it would say it's like uh, taking the listeners through the life of the person when i am narrating a biography you can feel that you are watching that movie it may look uh, a little strange how a person can show a story while talking that's the speciality that's a kind of narration i do and that's the feedback i got from the listeners also they say while listening to the show i'm able to see the story of that person journey of that person in front of my eyes so that is the unique that unique quality is attracting uh, i would say thousands of people across the world millions maybe little exaggeration i would say thousands of listeners across the world are getting attracted by these talk shows 
and uh, i would say this is you know the, the word screenplay screenplay means how to uh, how to pictureize a story on the screen these talk shows are kind of audio screenplay i know it's a little different word but when you are listening that audio you can see the picture so that's why they are called audio screenplays and uh, all these talk shows main point is bottom line is inspiration and motivation when i choose particular person of biography i'll make sure there is some inspirational and motivational incidents in that life that is the bottom line so any talk show whatever i choose it should be inspirational and it should be motivational and some of the talk shows as i told you it's not bio data it's a biography that's why i may not be able to narrate the whole story in 45 minutes that's why i do multi episodes for example if you see some of those examples i have given karl marx i did 12 episodes each 45 minutes the complete life story and similarly uh, what is the second one can you see the second one from the top who is that don't try to read but just can you see the picture you know that the gentleman christopher reeve superman i did six episodes on him and uh, the next one third one who is that guy third from the top charlie chaplin i did 12 episodes on charlie chaplin's life similarly john keats do you know that gentleman at the bottom most part he is have you ever seen him no okay his name is larry brilliant he lives here only near san francisco mill valley i'll tell you what is the specialty of these people and why i have chosen them why they are motivational and inspirational i'll explain so those are some of the talk shows i have done multi uh, episodes to give you an example out of those 600 talk shows some of the talk shows i have presented and i have chosen the personalities international personalities so that all of you can understand not confining to telugu for example karl marx you know karl marx is a communist uh, grandfather of communism who has written the capital and communist manifesto etc etc and john keats you know john keats he is a british poet who died at the age of 25 and he has written excellent poetry which we are repeating even after 200 years he wrote poetry on the last 6 years of his uh, life from 19 years to 25 years and he passed at the age of 25 years still after 200 years a uh, poetry lovers all around the world they are repeating his poetry and memorizing his poetry and quoting his poetry as a standard one and christopher reeve he is a superman um, do you know superman christopher reeve so his story i have narrated his story i'll explain the brief points of some of those stories and larry brilliant charlie chaplin oscar wilde randy pausch the last lecture and uh, um ada lawless you know ada lawless did you hear ada a d a that's a computer language that language is given that name to honor that uh, girl ada lawless he is the first computer programmer women computer programmer in the creation in the entire creation even before modern computers are invented she was the one who created a computer algorithm and uh, charlie chaplin of course all of you know and oscar wilde randy pausch ada lovelace and pb shelley he is also a british poet and lord byron he is also a british poet and satya nadella all of you know who is satya nadella microsoft ceo and uh, chuck feeny the the the, the second uh, line the bottom person he is he is he is chuck feeny billionaire who is not and uh, george eastman eastman color uh, eastman color eastman picture etc all of you might have heard the person who invented that eastman color he is george eastman keep there only don't move so i will explain briefly why i chose some of these people and what are the inspirational points in their lives karl marx let us take the first one karl marx uh, i'll go that one by one 
Karl Marx, he lived only for 64 years. He was born in Germany and he died in London. In between, he moved from one country to another country. His sole idea is to create a, 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 a theory which can be applicable to the entire world and which can address the problems of the downtrodden people. Downtrodden people. He did not know that is being that is going to be called communism, and he never imagined that his theory is going to live for centuries. All this happened in 1815, 1840. And when I am narrating the story, I don't go into the details of communism, whether I like communism or not, whether you like communism or not. Bottom line is, what is that inspiration in his life? What he has done throughout his life, he is from a well-to-do family. His wife is also from a well-to-do family. He has got every opportunity to live an excellent life. He doesn't have to do these things. But he has spent his whole life in creating that theory of communism. And in that process, he expected to write the capital, the book Capital, in few months. But it took a few years. In those years, because of his financial conditions, because of his utter poverty, he lost two sons. And one of the sons, when he passed away, he doesn't have money even for the coffee. So he donated, he, he asked for donations, then he took his, the death body, uh, I mean, the dead body of his son to the cemetery. So he endured all those difficulties, but still he did not leave his passion of writing that book. So what is that we can learn from that life? Don't leave, don't give up anything. If you believe in something, keep on working that. In between, you might have so many problems, definitely. But we have to overcome all those uh, problems in order to achieve what we think of. Christopher Reeve, when he was at the height of his career as a superman in the movies in 1995, just with a simple accident while riding on the horse, he fell down and uh, he became quadriplegic. So he was confined to his wheelchair for I think seven or eight years he lived after, afterwards. No, no, no part of his body was moving except his head. Except his head, he was not able to move any part of his body. In that condition, he produced a movie and he toured around the world. And also he started an organization to address uh, the people who are suffering with those things. And then uh, he did wonders. And the first Oscar, when he attended the first Oscar after his accident, he was taken to the Oscar stage in a, in a, in a um, wheelchair. Until one month before, he was a superman. He was jumping from one building to another building. And now he has to enter onto the stage in a, um, in a uh, wheelchair. And that wheelchair movement also, his hands were not moving. So he can control his wheelchair with his uh, uh, um, air coming from his nose. So in that situation, he entered onto the uh, stage of the Oscar. And after entering the Oscar, he did not tell about his pathetic situation. He never spoke about his accident. He never asked people be kind enough, nothing like that. He was talking about the social responsibility of movies when he entered onto the stage for the Oscar after his accident. You can search on YouTube, Super, Superman or, uh, Oscar or Christopher Reeve Oscar. You can see how he spoke uh, in that situation also. So these are all the inspirational and motivational things that we can draw from those biographies. How many, how many lives we have? We have only one life, right? We can live only one life. But how can we, how can we draw conclusions from the other lives by listening or reading the biographies, genuine and honest biographies. We are not alone in this world and we might be having a lot of problems in our life. Definitely, everyone will have lots of problems. That problem might not be unique to us. Since it is occurring to us, we think it is my problem. That problem might have been faced by somebody else at some other time. And they might have, they might have concluded some uh, resolutions for those problems or solutions to those problems. How can we know those solutions? How can we learn from their experiences? Though we don't experience, still we can draw experiences from those uh, other people. So biographies are the best way to get those ideas. 
Charlie Chaplin. He came to U.S. as a visitor. And then he lived here for 40 years without becoming a U.S. citizen. You know, when he started acting in Hollywood, in the third year itself, his income was $1 million in 1915. 100 years ago, in third year of starting acting, his remuneration was 680K or something like that. In those days, with his remuneration, he was about to purchase the entire Arizona, Arizona state. He was having that much money. He was not a citizen of U.S. And then uh, when he started acting in the movies also, once a, in one of the incidents, his director asked him to act in a in particular way. He did not like that. He did not find reasoning to act like that. Then he opposed him. He said, no, I am not going to act as per your directions. This is not correct. At that time, he was only two years uh, old in U.S. Then director threatened him. If you don't do like this, then I will cancel your permission to stay here, your visa and all. And he said, that's okay. If you want to cancel, you cancel it. I can go, I can do my stage place and all that. Only one incident I told like this. There are hundreds of incidents in Charlie Chaplin's life. The bottom line is not only you, you need to have your passion, you need to have your power, etc. But you need to have a little bit of conviction also. You have to believe in yourself. When you believe in yourself, you don't have to care anybody. Whatever you are doing, if you believe in yourself, start doing that one and don't uh, take any threats from your super, super superiors or whatever it may be. John Keats, as I told you, he passed away at the age of 25 years. He wrote poetry only for six years, but still we are remembering him after 200 years. Larry Brilliant, he is now, he is like 87 or 86 years. He lives in Mill, Mill Valley. He is the one who administered the last vaccine to the smallpox in the entire world. Once again, I'll repeat. He is the doctor who administered the last vaccine for the smallpox case in the entire world in Bangladesh. And he was a medical doctor in San Francisco. He became a hippie. He All the way he traveled to Himalayas and he started believing in one, one Swamiji there, one guru there. And with that belief, with that trust, he joined in World Health Organization. And he worked in India for about seven to eight years, traveling to the remote places and treating the people who are suffering with smallpox. All the time, he has got, he is, he's a US citizen. He can always come back and he can lead a happy life here, working in some hospital. Then why did he work there? Because he believed in one person who he trusted, his guru. His guru told him, you have to do this, he did that. So that trust and belief can do magics and it can do wonders. That is the bottom line we can learn from Larry Brilliant. Still he is here. So, and uh, the, the, the another gentleman on the left side, his name is Chuck Feeney. He donated $8 billion, $8 billion over 37 years to the different, different charities. And first 15 years, he did all those uh, charity donations without identification. One, one condition is, I'll give you $200 million, but you should not tell anybody. You don't have to put my name on the building or anything. Like that he did, but 15 years. Then afterwards, he has to come out of his, uh, this thing, and then he declared who he is and how he is getting his money and all that. Whenever you go to airport, you see DFS, duty-free shops, right? That chain is owned, it was owned by Chuck Feeney. And currently, his, uh, I think three, four years back, all his money, he donated $8 billion over 37 years. And 2020, he stopped because he exhausted all the money. You can go to uh, Pacific Philanthropist, no, uh, Arct Arctic Philanthropist, something like that. Pacific Philanthropist. You can go to the website, you can see how much he has donated. He has donated from $200 to $200 million, $8 billion, you can imagine. And uh, his watch cost is $5. And he always travels in the economic class in the, air, uh, in the uh, aeroplane. And he lives in a rented apartment of his charity organization. So person can be so simple. We don't have to exhibit our wealth and all that. 
but still we can do a lot of wonders by donations and touching different lives. So these are some of the highlights. Like this, each biography is like 45 minutes, as I told you. And the last slide is, these are some of the things I have received from the listeners. These are some of the, I cannot read that, so I will use my phone to read some of those messages. So these are the messages, some of the messages I have received from the listeners. The one, the sec, uh, middle one on the top, request from Hyderabad guy who lives in Methani slum area. He is from a slum area. He sends me this email. I am feeling losing myself. Lots of problems and pain I am going through. But today I am able to move on in life without committing any suicide, overcoming failures, pain, all because of you. I did not do anything. Just I was narrating the, uh, the biographies and only highlight the, highlighting those points. Those things motivated him not to commit suicide and do something in his life. And, uh, the, and the next one, believe me, your talk show has done something which antidepressants could not do. I have been taking antidepressants for quite some time, but now stopped as I am finding some sort of solace and peace through your talk shows about great people. And let me lead, read this, the last one, this big uh, uh, message. This is from a geriatrician in Arizona. He is a doctor who is working in the, um, uh, taking care of older people. I was facing somewhat disappointing, somewhat annoying staff and bureaucratic issues at work. It was testing my patience. Why good intentions have to face such opposition, etc.? I contemplated just going with the flow and not to stress about it. This is important. Then I heard the part three of Larry Brilliant, which I explained that smallpox doctor. Listened again. Felt renewed energy and commitment. I am a geriatrician. This is what happened to her after listening to that show. When persons with dementia exhibit disruptive behaviors, staff were calling police in her hospital. This is, this is what was happening. Who would handcuff the 80-year-olds and 90-year-olds who forgot what they did? These old people, they forgot what they did because they are suffering with dementia. The elderly with dementia remember the police handcuffs, especially if they are African-American. Anyway, next day, after listening to you, I declared in the doctor's meeting to chief of police and nursing not to handcuff vulnerable elderly with poor recent and better past memory. I spoke emotionally about the trauma, handcuffs induced, etc. Now they will not use handcuffs. So the work you do is directly or indirectly making the world a better place. Thank you again. This is the one of the email I received from one of the doctors. So there are like this, the 200, 300 stories are there. Bottom line is, Biographies can do magic. They can do wonders if they are presented in a, in a, in a, in a way that uh, listeners can receive that. All these things I am doing as a charity only. No financials, no, no um, money is involved in that. I am spending in my as a hobby in my spare time. I am doing all these things. This is a one-man army work. Thank you very much for listening to me and giving me opportunity to share my experiences. Thank you.